Alexa, change small bedroom to purple. Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to change out your bedroom light into a Wi-Fi enabled smart light like this one. There actually used to be a ceiling fan here, so those are a little bit harder to wire, but today I'm gonna to show you how to do it. So today we're working with the Smart LED Ceiling Light by Taloya, and it was purchased on Amazon. It's a flat pancake style light. I'll leave a link in the description below as to where you can purchase it. And for tools, you'll need a screwdriver. I have an electric one and some screw heads and some mounting hardware and cable connectors. So as you can see, this is what we had before. It's just a standard ceiling fan. The steps apply to a ceiling light as well. Now, before you do anything, you want to go into your basement, find your electrical panel, and turn off the breaker that corresponds to the ceiling light or the ceiling fan. This is the scary part, but as long as you turn off the breaker and you go upstairs and you try the switch and the lighter fan doesn't work, you're safe. The electricity is off and we can begin. So the first step is to touch the light bulb just to make sure it's not hot. And then you want to go ahead and remove it. So one, two, and three. And coming on to the top of the ceiling fan, you'll see that there are four screws. So there are two on this side and then there's two on the other side as well. And we will first remove this screw and then we're going to loosen the second screw and then twist it off. So here I'm just loosening all of the screws. So one on each side that holds up the fan and then just loosening these two so that the entire fixture can slip right off. And when you slide it off, you just wanna hold it with one hand or you can rest it onto the ladder or have somebody help you hold it up if you have somebody next to you. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna pull out all of the wires from the ceiling and you'll see that there is a green wire, which is typically the ground wire. It can also look like a bare copper wire. As you see here, we have both. And then you'll have two live wires, so the black and the red. Uh, those supply power to the fan and the lights. And you'll also see a white neutral wire, which is this one right here. So the next step will be to remove all of the wire caps off of each wire and I'll just speed that up as I do that here. Just make sure you save the wire caps, you might need to use it later. And if any of the wires give you any issues, just pull on them a little bit, try to unwind them and they should all come off. And when they do come off, you'll be able to hold the ceiling fan and slowly lower it to the ground and then just set it on the floor or put it to the side. And then you want to get back on your ladder and remove this plate from the ceiling. And usually it's just these two screws that hold it up. So you unscrew those with the right screw head and you remove the plate. So now you're left with a ground wire, uh, two live wires here, and a neutral wire on the right. Now we don't need both live wires. So we can actually cap off the red live wire, which is the one that's not controlled by the switch. And we want to use the black live wire, which is the one that's being controlled by the switch. If we capped both of them together, then the light will always be on and the switch would be useless and that's not what we want. So we just want to use this black wire. So because the new light only has two wires, we have a live wire and a neutral wire, we don't need some of the wires like this ground wire. So we can tuck that into the box and we also don't need this extra red live wire. So we can tuck that away in the box as well. So the old screws that we have actually don't fit this bracket. They're a little bit too short. So we have to use the new screws that was included in the box. I usually like to use the old screws because they're generally better quality, but in this case, we don't really have a choice. So we're going to use the new screws. And all you wanna do is feed the wires through the bracket and you want to align the screw holes on the bracket with the screw holes on the octagon box. And all you want to do is to insert the screws. And usually I like to screw them in by hand first. And then you can go in with your screwdriver or electric screwdriver and you can tighten them that way. Just make sure you don't tighten them too much because it is a plastic bracket and it can crack if you tighten it too much. 
So next we're gonna connect the wires and for this we have two connectors that we can use. We can either use these yellow connectors or the new connectors that came with the new lights. And for this purpose, we're going to use the new connectors because they're just a little bit easier to work with when you're only dealing with two wires. If you have a lot of wires, then maybe you can go with the yellow screw caps. So to connect them, you just want to connect each wire one at a time. So here I'm connecting the live wire. You just insert it and you push down that little blue clip to lock it in place. And then you connect the neutral wire. And if it's a little bit difficult to connect, you just wanna take it out and bend it a little bit, try to make it straight. Uh, try connecting it again and it should snap into place and just give it a little bit of a pull just to make sure it's secure. Next we want to attach the wires of the light to the connectors that we just attached to our ceiling wires. So to do that we're going to hold the light with one hand and we're going to insert the wires into the connectors with the other hand and snap it down into place like so and we're going to do it with the other wire as well. It takes a little bit of practice but you should be able to get it with one hand. After you connect both of the wires, you want to push the wires into the box so that the light can attach to the bracket flush. So don't be afraid of damaging the wires. Just make sure the connection is secured and just push the wires up in there and use a little bit of force. Then you want to screw the light fixture onto the bracket. So you align it and then you twist it clockwise. Now it might take a couple tries like it did take me here because sometimes it doesn't align properly, but just keep twisting and eventually it'll catch and you'll be able to successfully install the light. Then go back into your basement, open your electrical panel, find the breaker you turned off and switch it back on. If you did everything right, you should be left with a working light. And this is a pretty cool one. It can actually change a whole bunch of different color temperatures. And it also has a LED light strip on the top of the light that can change into any color that you like. You just have to pair it with the app on your phone. And it can also dim and brighten as it needs to. So you can even use it as a nightlight. And because the light is Wi-Fi enabled, you want to leave the switch always on and you can control the light using the app on your phone, or you can connect it to any one of the smart home services like Google or Alexa, and you can control it using your voice. So I use Alexa in my home, so whenever I say something like, Alexa, turn on the bedroom ceiling lights, it'll turn on. And there are also a couple other cool voice activated features such as changing the color, or you can also tell it to dim or brighten. If you tell it to turn on the white light, then it turns on the main light. And if you tell it to change the color to any one of the colors, like change the ceiling light to blue or change the ceiling light to purple, it'll do that. Overall, if you're just getting started with your smart home, I highly recommend changing out your ceiling light to something like this one. The whole process only took about 20 minutes and I find myself using this light almost every single day. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it very informative. And if you had any questions on how any of the processes were done, please leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll try my best to get to every single one and to reply to your questions. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.